Um, yeah, so like I was saying, today we're going to look at the remote work tools. And these are basically the tools, digital tools that can help you properly collaborate with your team if you're working in a remote setting. Um, and this could be in terms of um, communication with your team if you want to collaborate on certain projects um just different productivity techniques to ensure that your workflows are streamlined and it could also be on remote team management and also uh, maybe things like video conferencing software as well um so all of this is just for if you find yourself in a team that works remotely um some of the tools that could be helpful for you to um to actually become better um or manage a team very well um so let's get started so we'll first start with introduction of remote work um i know you are all familiar with this so for example how you guys are studying at an academy, you're kind of um, working or studying remotely. And I think you've, you're probably somehow aware of all the tools that we've been using from Notion to Slack, to Google Meet, to Google Drive, Google Suite in general. All of those tools are really helpful if you're trying to manage a team that works remotely or if you find yourself in a team that um works remotely um so remote work is basically just an arrangement where employees choose to perform their tasks from uh, different locations other than the traditional office and i think some people do prefer some people do prefer um working remotely there are others who prefer working uh, from the traditional offices and all of them are really important depending on you yourself your timelines what you have to do and everything um, some also prefer a hybrid model so you some days you work from home some days you work from the office and i think what defeats um working remotely is that getting that human interaction if you need to discuss something or talk to or have that um yeah that human interaction between people so if you're working on something it's easy to just uh, talk to your neighbor and ask them uh, about just ask them questions about uh, things that uh, you you have in common or it could be just a work um could be just work um so yeah, uh, remote work kind of started during um, the COVID pandemic 19. That's when it really surged up. And I think nowadays it's kind of going down, but it's still a huge number of people still work remotely. And uh, one of the benefits that remote work offers is um, maybe flexibility um so you can be able to juggle family uh your work and also yourself better and some also say it kind of improves their productivity because at less less time is wasted um on on traffic if you're traveling uh yeah less time is wasted and then you kind of get to have a better work-life balance um so again this is all uh this can be different for everyone so you have to find what works exactly for you when you are looking for a job or if you if you're working in a team that um yeah if you're working on on different teams um yeah so aside from reducing the daily commute uh, you can also reduce costs for businesses and it can also, one of the other main things is it can lead to a more diverse or a distributed workforce. So if you get 
um, company, all the employees are working remotely from different parts of the world. It's kind of good to have that uh, representation from different countries. And also people will get to learn um, more about different cultures when they work with a diverse workforce. Um, yeah, so I think we all know, I think we've also talked about this. So um, traditionally, or the norm in most um, workplaces or in most work yeah in most workplaces has always been traditional office space and this has really been very successful for the past I think over a hundred years plus and um, with this sudden change of people trying to now work remotely there are ways in which so the traditional um, offices had already found different ways and procedures or processes just to make sure that um, all the work, the workflow is done well. So in terms of how do you report, um, sitting on the desks, um, uh, exactly how do you collaborate with each other, communicate, uh, deliver work, meetings, etc. And when it comes to uh, remote work for every project to be successful or for every kind of workplace to be successful there are four main um, the four main things that need to be done efficiently to make sure that it's uh, successful so they're kind of building blocks to your digital workspace so the first and most important thing is communication how do i communicate from someone in Ethiopia, South Africa, and we're all in different countries, but we want to make sure that everyone communicates well. Um, so again, this the choice of a communication tool will vary according to the number of um, according to the number of teams that you have. So if you're only two people in an organization, it makes sense for you to use WhatsApp or Telegram for that. Uh, but if you're managing a big team, so over 100, um, there are platforms that can kind of encourage that kind, uh, that can support that number of communication. And I know something like Telegram could work when all, all the members of the group are there, but uh, I don't think it really gives that uh, wholesome, um, that wholesome, yeah, so for example, if all the members of the team will be in one group, how will different teams, for example, the finance team, um, the HR team, the research and development team, if they want to discuss certain matters, they kind of need each, each and every one of them needs their groups just to ensure effective communication between them. So there came certain tools that kind of helped to facilitate um such communications for a workplace and we're going to look at the different types of tools for each the other building block is collaboration so you could have a project that requires the input of three let's for example say the basic thing building a website you need a ui ux designer you need a web um, a back-end developer, front-end developer, uh, someone, maybe a product manager, ETC, and you all want to ensure that um, the project is streamlined in a way that you all can collaborate well to build, to make that dream come true or to bring that thing to life. Um, so what are those tools that can help you collaborate with each other? We're going to look at that as well. And also, for project management this is basically just to keep tracks to keep track of tasks and deadlines and progress uh, so with that it's always important to use different management tools and it's mostly used by project managers but it's also very important for the team as well so 
Um, for the team, it's very necessary for you to understand exactly what are your tasks, what are you, what, yeah, what are you working on, what are your tasks, your deadlines. Um, but as for the project, it's good for you to understand those setting exactly how to use those tools um, to better manage the tasks and the workflows, or do project planning. Um, yeah, so they kind of help you create an organized schedule, set priorities to ensure that the projects stay on track, even when everyone is working from different locations. The other thing is um, time management, and this is very key to every project. So with every project has goals, and with every goal, every goal has to have like a timeline. Um, maybe a due date and things like that. So it's also important to have time management tools, and it can this can this can really help you plan your day. So you could have tens and you could have a lot of activities to do in a week. And since we're not really computers, um, we might tend to forget other meetings or other. Yeah, we may tend to forget other meetings. So um, time management tools are very important for remote workers and it, they kind of help you stay focused and more productive. So this could include things like calendars, um, scheduling apps or time tracking softwares and maybe um, tools to help you focus and avoid distractions and also help you maintain that healthy work-life balance. So imagine all of this four categories as the building blocks to your digital workspace. They kind of give you the structure and the functionality that is needed to transform the remote work from just a concept into a very productive and efficient reality. So kind of making it like a traditional workspace, but making sure that work gets delivered every single day. Um, so from this four main building blocks that are very necessary for you to have a wholesome um, digital workspace, uh, we can look at some of the tools that will be necessary for each and every um, for each and every category. So, for example, uh, communication. So, like I mentioned earlier, um, you could have a big team and then you have sub teams, and then under those sub teams, you can also have direct messages or just uh, channels for different um, different purposes in the organization or different projects. So if maybe so for example slack um you could create uh for example let's go back to our website um designing project so under slack everyone working in that project will be there and then you could have maybe there are three people working on the back end two people working on the front end and then the product manager so you could have all those channels so um you could have a channel for just back end, soft end, uh, front end, um, UI, all of them in Slack. So Slack is kind of it's getting it's gaining popularity recently, and it's a messaging platform specifically for businesses. So it allows teams to communicate and collaborate in real time through uh, messages or group channels, or and even sometimes it helps with file sharing. Um, so the whole goal basically for communication is to just ensure that all the remote workers stay connected and kind of discuss the projects and provide quick updates throughout the day. Um, so that's on communication. So on collaboration, uh, we have Notion or Google Workspace. So this in collaboration it's just to um so for example notion notion is uh it's an all-in-one workspace i'm not sure how far you have explored notion i know we kind of only use it for 
um, just to see our schedules, but it has much more features uh, other than that. You can write documents on it, you can um, assign tasks and assign someone who's directly responsible to that task and also set deadlines. And um, you can also embed other apps in Notion. Uh, it, it, it's, it's a whole project management tool. Um, yeah, it also, it has project management tools, it has collaboration features, uh, you can also take notes. But the whole thing for this collaboration is to just ensure that teams can create and edit documents together and build knowledge bases. So if you're maybe documenting how you did the front end and the back end, everyone can come into that page or website or Notion and kind of get an understanding, okay, what have these guys done on the back end? What have they done on the front end? And basically just to keep all those documents in or files in one location and you can just like just like google workspace and when i say google workspace i'm talking about google documents google slides sheets um google drive itself um so google drive can kind of put all your documents and then different people you can use different emails to kind of share or give access to people to um, just have a look at that um, document. So yeah, they can help to create and edit documents, um, write reports, documentations, and they can also be able to manage tasks. So you could have a list of um, each member of the team and someone who's directly responsible to like what are your roles or tasks under this project and when are the deadlines um etc so this tools notion and google are all very flexible and they're very powerful tools for remote teams to kind of organize their work and i think one of the thing that is key for collaboration is to have that centralized um to have all the work set centralized. So all the documentations, all the reports, everything about um, that, every file associated with that project can be kept in one easily accessible location. And that can use that you can use Notion or Google Workspace. Um, so another thing is uh, for project management is yeah, another thing is project management. And this is basically, like we said, to just keep track of tasks, deadlines, progress. You can use the different project management school uh, tools. So they, yeah, you can be able to manage uh, different apps, workflows, or project planning. Um, can you guys still hear me? I think I lost my network. Um, so yeah, the other thing. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so the other thing is project management tools. And um, yeah, once again, I think all of these tools um, they could vary from different organizations. So you could find an organization that doesn't use Slack, instead they use Google Messaging. Um, they could, they are very different, or maybe they use Discord or Telegram. Again, it depends on the company and what you choose to use. These are just a few examples. Also on collaboration, um, other, it's not only Notion and Google Workspace that exists, there are other collaboration tools that an organization can choose to uh, use. For project management, there are very, very, very many tools outside out there. And uh, an example is Trello and even Google Workspace itself. 
And we also have other tools like Asana. We also have a table. I'm not sure how, if you guys have already used these tools before. Uh, but for this specific exercise, we're going to look at Trello. But um, for project management tools, it's basically to just give you a visual of the project management applications. So this could be in terms of maybe you're creating a board or maybe a list or even just cards to kind of help your team organize and prioritize tasks. And it kind of provides a clear overview of the project and the deadlines and the progress. So um, it could have features like maybe checklists or maybe uh, due dates, very important. If you have attachments to certain documents or links to um, or links to a certain task or yeah event, it you could also add it there and it can help collaborate properly. And one of the things or one of the things that major things that come up on project management tools is a Kanban board. So it's basically just three columns of, or it could be four, again, depending on how the organization decides. So you could have a first block of, um, wait, let me just look for an example. So it could have, um, Uh, so it could have something like this. Oh. So when I say a Kanban board, this is, I'm not sure if it's clear. Yeah, that if. So it could have, so this maybe on radar could be like, what are your weekly goals as a team? So you've listed all the goals here. And then it has someone who's directly responsible to each of the tasks that are given. So a, a, a project manager would be like, so we have all this, all these things that need to be done by the end of the week. So you need to fix a bug. You need to maybe change the color on the front, front end. And then it's assigned to someone. So once it's assigned to you, you can get it on your email that you have been assigned a task. And then um, you could have something like to do. So this is maybe what you're going to do today. And then um, what you're doing at the moment. And then once it's done, you can move it here. And then you can always kind of move this to here once it's done. So when a project manager comes to check on the progress from the team, they can have that, uh, they can have that visual awareness of the tasks or the progress that's under that's that's going on um and this this kind of uh this page uh could this page could be shared between all the members of the team so all the members of the team could have a view of what is going on who's doing what and where are they are they stuck do they need help um ETC. So that's on Trello. So another similar tool to Trello is Asana. And there's also Airtable, but Airtable, um, Airtable is not free for, so organizations kind of need to pay to get, um, to get, to get access to that. And it's sometimes very good because it can also allow automations of different things and it can also include things like um so if you have it can also accommodate things like databases it can copy something from an excel sheet directly to it's yeah it's it's a really great tool but um have to pay so with trello and asana um they're free unless you want to explore more features then it's can it cannot be free but yes you can also use trello or asana or even notion notion also has the same thing so if you want to plan your week 
and you know your weekly goals are this and then you can kind of plan okay how do i break down all these weekly goals into things i'm going to do today tomorrow uh etc and then every day when you wake up in the morning and you check your asana or your trello you can see okay these are the tasks that i will be working on today um yeah but it's basically good for whole teams just to ensure that you know exactly what your team member is working on their progress or their, if they're stuck and things like that um the other thing is time management and i think we looked at this on the first week yeah on the first week so basically google calendar it can kind of it's a time management tool again time management is important not just for you alone but for you and your team it's good for all of you to have that streamlined um schedule so you know okay this this week i have a meeting with this team this other team etc um so it helps um uh, yeah, it, it, it basically just helps to schedule your days efficiently and you can create events, you can also set reminders, you can share availability with your team and you can also manage multiple calendars simultaneously. Uh, you can maybe color code it if you guys manage to try it on the first exercise week, you can color code to maybe, uh, so maybe you're you have your personal job and you also have kefir and you also have family work so you could you could put all the all the events that are related to kefir on color green and then you can put uh, all the events or yeah all the events related to your work color red and then your family you can put yellow or yeah so it's easy to it, it can help you to visually understand exactly what most of your day will be, um, what you'll do most of your day or where most of your energy will go for the day. Um, yeah, so each of those tools kind of play a crucial role to facilitate remote work. Um, they're very effective and very efficient solutions. And without I don't think you can manage um, a digital workspace successfully without any of this. So for every digital workspace, it needs to have a communication, collaboration, project management, and time management tools. It really helps remote teams to stay connected, organized, and very productive to just ensure seamless and successful remote work experience. And as I said, again, there are many, many tools out there, but these are just examples um, that we feel it's good for you to learn. Um, so if we talk about the future of remote work, um, so I, I think some companies, I think I saw like Microsoft just trying to uh, make all the all the remote workers come back to in office. So I, I don't know if the productivity kind of took a positive or a negative turn, but we're not really sure exactly how the future of remote work would be. Some have seen its importance, some have not. Um, so depending on your organization, depending on yourself, which one works best, but we, uh, we don't think it's going to die any time any time soon. Um, yeah, so it will continue. It's very flexible to continue to evolve beyond the traditional nine to five office job. Um, some businesses are trying to embrace that flexible work arrangement, especially on startups who cannot afford an office space, and they would rather save that money and use it for something else for the business that also works for them. Um, yeah, again, depending on what you want, remote, hybrid. Um, and then there are also more new tools coming up each and every time. Um, so yeah, we. I think there was a company in Ethiopia that does 
um, that creates virtual reality and augmented reality platforms that kind of replicate an in-person office experience. So I'm not sure how that will go, but we hope to see more and more developments and advancements in future. Um, yeah, and it, yeah, it, in terms of its impact on traditional office setups, it has, um, again, this is very, it's subject to your thoughts exactly. Um, but I feel like uh, some companies reevaluated the need for large and maybe office spaces instead of um, more flexible and distributed workspaces. Um, and we've also, with this, we've also seen a surge in um, shared office spaces like co-working environments. They're very huge uh, here in Kenya, I think. Not sure about Ethiopia. And But yeah, those things are also still on the rise uh, because you have um, different remote workers coming to a central place because they miss that interaction or that teams are not in their country. They come to meet other like-minded people in uh, co-working spaces just for the sake of interaction, networking, and yeah, collaboration. Um, so my view is the future of remote work is bright. And yeah, some organization will embrace those changes, some will not, but other, all in all, it's really important to just understand if you find yourself in such a situation, how will I help to effectively or just understand exactly how to um, run a proper digital workspace. Um, yeah, so that marks the end of our tutorial. Um, so for, for the careers exercise this week, you are going to kind of just introduce yourself to the basic things of the four projects, the four tools that are needed um, for a remote work. So if you, how, how, if I want to, if you're probably setting your own company, how exactly will you create that workspace on Slack for people to communicate? Um, so it just has a background and the exercise is on onboarding new members. So say you, you're starting a new company and you want to onboard every employee to all the to all the spaces and tools uh, that you're going to use. So uh, for this exercise, we're going to look at specifically four. So Google Calendar, Slack, Notion, and Trello. And we've talked about the importance of all of them. Um, so the task is to onboard someone. So you'll be, you'll kind of practically uh, do something on creating a Slack workspace. How do you invite someone to your workspace? Um, Notion, how do I create a Notion board for my team? How do I add my team members here? If I want to attach links or uh, embed other apps into Notion, how do I exactly do it? Google Calendar, I think you already did it on time management exercise, but you're still going to do it. And also Trello, how do you create um, tasks and ensure, uh, how do you create tasks on your Kanban and on a Kanban board to keep you keep, to keep a track of all your um, list of tasks and yeah also on Trello and yeah as always um, submission is on PDF format uh, PPT slides and submit to be submitted on the Tenex platform. Do we have any questions? concerns or anything. Okay, so if not, we are going to end our session there. Thank you guys for being here and I hope you have fun exploring the different tools for remote work. Enjoy your evening. Uh,
yeah enjoy your evenings and bye